today's question, following up on yesterday's Netflix topic, is about, is Netflix making too much stuff? Check it out. Oh, hi. My name's uh, Peter Cunnington. My question is, do you think that Netflix would have better success with their shows if they didn't put out so many volume of shows and bury them and not really promote them very well? So by the time you actually kind of hear about a show, it's basically over or you forget about it. And then you're going to think about going back to watch it, but you don't even know where it is or what to watch. Uh, yeah, and then they might not cancel so many shows either. Okay, uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. So yesterday we were talking on the show about, somebody wrote in and asked the question, or called in and asked, you know, if Netflix moved to the week by week release of things, could that help prevent some shows from getting so many early access? To which we all thought around here, Yes, because then you're giving the show the opportunity to build an audience, like in Under One Division, which had pretty small numbers when it debuted. By the time it got to episode seven or eight, it was one of the number one shows in the world. And Netflix shows, like, they have a very short window of opportunity once they drop to pick up an audience. You got like 72 hours. If you don't pick up a, a viral nature, if you will, on your show within the first 72 hours, you're done. And a week by week release would do that. This is an interesting question, though. Because, oh my God, you're not wrong about the quantity of content that Netflix put, put, puts out. Just their original movies, forget the series. The original movies, what was the number? It was like 80-something original movies they were putting out in a year. I don't have the exact number, but it's in that ballpark there. And their number of series that they're dropping all the time is insane. And one of their biggest complaints about Netflix has always been, as much as I like Netflix, is Netflix will never tell you about our stuff. Because there's so many people writing, hey, John, did you see this on Netflix? Hell, I never even heard of it. I'm on Netflix all the time and I never heard of it because they don't know how to promote their stuff. I haven't thought about it, but I think your question, I agree. I, I really do think that a part of the problem that Netflix is facing and why so many other shows don't get anything is because they simply have such a glut of content. If you look at Apple Plus, right? Apple Plus is going about it very differently than a lot of the other streamers. And I'm not saying they're doing it right. But they are enjoying some success with the notion of they don't put out a lot, but they put a lot of care and attention into each of the few things they put out and they market the hell out of the few things that they put out. Whether you're talking about uh, things like um, Severance or you're talking about uh, Ted Lasso or you're talking about, God, I love um, Mythic Quest. I love Mythic Quest, but they don't put out a ton of stuff. So it's a polar opposite of what something like Netflix is doing. So without giving it a ton of time to think about it, yeah, I actually think it would behoove Netflix to say, you know what, why don't we make half the stuff that we make? Let's put a little bit more resources into that. Let's spend, let's put a little bit of the money that we would have spent on 10 shows that nobody would have watched and maybe use it in some marketing. I, again, what the approach would be, I'm not sure, but I think in principle, your philosophy of would fewer shows help the shows that they have? I think so. I don't know, Aaron, what do you think about that? Let's Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save money this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Guys, I have told you before that when I was on one of the major phone carriers, I was spending literally three Three times as much every month and switching to Mint Mobile couldn't have been easier. So for people just looking to save some extra money this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in just minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to Mint Mobile mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. It's interesting. I'm, you know, as we're talking about this, I'm looking at this article that is actually on uh, one of Netflix. Uh, uh, it's on what's on Netflix, which I don't know if that's a if that is a Netflix affiliated site or not. But it's talking about how uh, Netflix has a 50 percent ratio of their originals to their licensed products, meaning that for every one uh 
streaming show or movie that they have that they're licensing from someone else, they have an equal number of original series. And this article is talking about that as if it's a good thing. But the problem that I find with Netflix is something that you've been complaining, John, about for years, which is that they look, I don't know what their marketing budget is, but it's got to be in the single or double digits. And I'm meeting like $15 because I never see anything marketed anywhere. And the only reason I even know that anything's on Netflix is because I go to what's new. And I've got to figure out my algorithm because it keeps suggesting these shows to me that I have no interest in watching, no zombie shows, just more crap like Bridgerton. No offense to the Bridgerton folks. But um, uh -oh. th they really do have s such a... A deluge of content that it kind of is like it's like the reason I don't eat at Cheesecake Factory. Don't give me all those options. Give me in and out. <laughs> they bring you a novel to read for a minute. Exactly. Yeah. Like I don't want to put that much energy into it. You know, I like the Steve Jobs method of I'm going to wear the same outfit every day because I don't I want to think about other stuff. If I have to go to your website and actually think about it and get overwhelmed by the amount of content, I'm just going to go somewhere else. And it makes me actually long for, oh, what's going, what's happening next on Apple Plus? It just makes me kind of want to switch the channel. Christian, what do you think? When I walk into the Cheesecake Factory, I know exactly what I want, I, but I don't go through the menu. So I already know. Stranger Things. <laughs> you know, it's like, I know, you, I, you know what I mean? I know what I know what's there. I know what I'm going to order. And then I'm gone because I'm not going to browse around too long because it's exhausting. You can browse through Netflix for an hour and a half to two hours before you find anything. Plus, mm -hmm. you don't know if it's any good. And the stupidest thing, one of the many stupid things that they do, but the stupidest thing is, all right, let me watch a trailer for it. And some scene from the middle of the movie plays. Uh, yeah. And yes, I'm like, I hate that. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. Why do I care about some guy in the kitchen talking about how he's going to make a burrito? I don't I don't care about this. It's like, what? what is this? What is the movie? What is the show? And that happens all the time. I think it's a mixture of everything. What the caller says, too much focus. And the, and the week by week are two things. The problem is they're playing in a game because they were the first. They were the ones to go, well, we're yeah. the streaming. We, we, we did everything. We dictated how everybody else is going to do it. So we're going to do it our way. And their way is not working anymore because you know who's playing the game really good right now is Paramount+. Plus. I know when their new shows are coming out. And granted, every one of them is Taylor Sheridan. But who cares? But I know good. <laughs> who cares? I know when their show is coming out. Apple is another great example, right? There's, I know when their shows are coming out because they put trailers behind it. There's marketing behind it. I hear things about it. There's stories behind it. And like, it's exhausting for, I can even imagine for the trades to cover all the Netflix stuff because there's one every other week or every other day, every hour, every other hour. Right. And it's like this new thing, like last night, I, there was something on Netflix I was looking for and I was always going to start watching, um, RRR, right. And it's going to, and so I, I John said, loves it. Well, so, I, but I sat down and I was going to start and as I'm going through these documentaries that all looked interesting, start popping up and I'm like, well, I didn't hear anything about that and that and then I'm like, oh, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to watch Young Rock. And I did the movie that I was there to see in the first place. Didn't even, I, I went to go watch Young Rock on Peacock because first thing it popped up, go, I wanted to see that. The marketing behind it has to change the week to week has to change. They need some big effects. They've got the money and they've got the they, they've got great stuff. And they got the library. They have it. Yeah. They got the library. Rob, what do you think about the question? I mean, it is part of the like a lot of people will argue about quantity over quality, but is too much quantity becoming a problem for them? John, in our house we call it flick sand. Like Elizabeth's like, what are you doing? And I say I'm caught in the flick sand. And she knows that I'm sitting there on the Netflix. It's a PG thing. show. It's a PG going, show. Uh, no, I'm going around, you know, instead of <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Yep. You know, I'm stuck in the flick sand. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Help me, help me, help me. I'm drowning. Um, but I, but I think that um, the the problem that I can't stand with modern streaming and Netflix is the worst. Is every single thing has the same size thumbnail? It's all the same. Sometimes they'll give you like your featured thing or what your. But for the most part, I would love to have some kind of a a place like, and they show you the top ten in your country or whatever. But I would like to see some kind of an interface that says, here's what's dropped. Like, here's the Netflix calendar for the week. Yes. Like what we talk about. Yeah. Here's what has dropped this week. And it gives you a Netflix calendar, some kind of an interface that tells you what is there. Because when you, when you like, look, I'll go, even when I go to a genre like horror, you know, suddenly I'm, I'm confronted with all these horror. It's all the same thumbnail. And sometimes there's something I'm looking for, like, whatever like if i'm looking for baskin this turkish 
horror film and it looks the same as everything else and i'm looking right at what i want and i don't even see it because mm -hmm. it's surrounded by all these other ridiculously horribly designed horror posters that look exactly the same stuck in the flick sand man but you know like what it. robert i was actually stuck in the flick sand the other night and i and tom and i were just wanting to put something on we just put the kid down to bed we're just wanting to eat our food and i go you know what Robert Meyer Burnett always knows the latest stuff that's just come out. I'm going to text him and he's going to tell us what to watch. And I texted, Robert, what should I watch right now? And this, excuse me, mother effer, for those who don't like my cursing, texted me back and said, watch Strange Days on HBO. Oh, and I was like, oh, Great there's movie. a new show called oh, Strange Days. That, no. It's a 1995 film. I was like... But it's a great movie. But it just, it's dropped. It's a great it just movie. dropped on HBO it's Max, a, and you can't get, get it on current. physical media. It's a great stuff. movie, and I, uh, ahead of its time. Ahead of its time, that for Catherine sure. Ahead of its time James in 1995. Yeah. I need 2023. I know. But, well, you, you should know, have specified. You, you There's something that, something that Rob... To watch on Netflix, uh, adding, at, watching myself add things to my queue that I'm never going to watch. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. well, something that Rob just said, though, minutes. would be interesting also. I mean, Netflix has eight billion comedians right that they do specials a lot of comedy for. specials a lot yeah. of specials that pop up if you did something like both what aaron and, and, and robert just said with imagine like a show that was that is featured half an hour whatever it might be a comedian hosting it whatever it could be and saying hey guess what this week this is all the stuff that had dropped on netflix boom you get the uh, there's a comedy special that's coming yes. out there's there's a uh, you know the new documentaries that are coming out there's there's these movies and, and an original tv show and we have one of the stars from the tv show here here you go and it's like it's the first thing you see when you pop up you watch it for whatever it's 15 20 minutes and then you know like oh there's they t just covered a whole bunch of stuff that's dropping this week and it's you like a weekly kind show of ironic about this whole conversation also i just remembered one of my neighbors in my building is actually a marketing executive yeah. for Netflix. I was going to say, don't you live like right beside a Netflix yeah. exec? I do, and he's a good friend of mine. So guess what, Chris? I'm sending you this video, good. and I hope that you and I hope good. that you, you show it to I all talk, your buddies at Netflix. We talked about that, like an Entertainment Tonight of Netflix, like five years ago. Oh yeah. Like, why don't yeah. they do that like every week or every night? Like you said, well, I think every, on... if you do it every week though on Monday, because they know, because you know, you have the programming of knowing right. what's coming out, then you have an idea that you can see all these different things. It's a new true for all you true crime lovers. We have this for all this, you know. It's yeah. like, oh wow, I didn't know that dropped this week. If you want environmental catastrophe documentary, one hundred percent, they have everything. Go. And the John right. Campia channel can produce that content. <laughs> yeah, we can make it. Uh, uh, don't price. don't laugh. There were there were conversations about that a few years ago. But anyway, uh, never. I won't go down that rabbit hole. Guys, question is for you. 100%. What do you think about this? Do you think maybe that? Netflix might benefit from the idea of cutting down on the amount of stuff that they do and putting more attention to the stuff that they're trying to promote. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.